Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video, I am going to show you how to use the count function in Pandas. So this video series is going to be focused on Pandas aggregation methods. In the last video series, I covered NumPy aggregation method and we did some product, mean, median, minimum and maximum standard deviation variance percentiles. And we are going to do something similar for the Pandas aggregation methods. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and begin. Let me go ahead and do df.head so you can get a preview of our data frame. This is a US alcohol consumption data frame. And to, let's say, get a count of how many items is in your data frame using Pandas, it's very simple. You just do df.count. And that's pretty much it. So basically, df.count um counts the number of items in every single column well yeah every single column now how do you actually count stuff using regular python regular python is very similar you just do length parenthesis your data frame and here it tells you 77 so python has a length function and when you pass in a data frame like this, it will just tell you that um, your data frame has 77 rows. Now, one of the advantages that um, Pandas has over regular Python is that you can specify which axis to do the count on. All right, so this right here is column-wise counting, okay? Now, we can also do it row-wise. So Normally we do df.count and then let's say axis equal to zero. So this will give you the exact same result that we got above right here. But what if you want to count row wise? You just do df.count and then here you specify axis equal to one. Now what it does is it gives you the count of how many items in, is in each row. Now, this is not very useful in this situation, but I still wanted to show you how it's done. So with that being said, which one is actually fast? How do you decide if you want to use um, the pandas count function, if you want to use the regular Python count func um, length function? Well, we can use something called timing. So if we go ahead and do magic command time, and we do df.count, and pass in our data frame and do time length and do our data frame and if we go ahead and run this oh so <laughs> i'm not supposed to pass in a data frame i was like what is wrong here so if we go ahead and run this you see that if we are using the pandas count function it costs about 1.71 milliseconds but if you are using the built-in Python length function, it costs us about 11 microseconds. That's a huge difference in time. Yeah, that is how to use the pandas count function and how to get length and how to do horizontal or row-wise count. And now you can see for yourself the time difference between using regular pandas and using Python. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you made it this far in this video but you didn't like it please give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel you can find you can get access to this notebook that i use in today's video by going to machinelearningeducation.com and once you are here you can click on free data science resources and you'll be able to get to this page and from this page, you'll be able to get access to this notebook and any notebook I use in my YouTube videos and in my blog posts is going to be in here in this platform. I create a lot of YouTube videos and blogs. I end up with a lot of notebooks and just find it easier to put it all in one platform. You can also find me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I create my data science blog post. And as time goes by, I'm going to create more and more data science blog posts. And if you are here at evidencen.com, you can go to free data science resources. And you'll still be able to get access to this page and get access to this notebook.
Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.